Hey guys, today I wanted to talk to you about recording the bass drum and some techniques you can use on that. The first thing I want to say is that I highly recommend you use two microphones whenever you're recording the bass drum. First, let's talk about um, one of the two mics, the one that I use most often. I have a microphone mounted inside. It's an AKG D112 and as you can see, I have it extremely close to the front sight head. This position will get me a lot of attack from that front sight head. Now, if you could think about the overall sound of the bass drum, right? You have a, some amount of boominess and some amount of attack. So here I'm trying to capture that attack. Now, because it's mounted internally, whenever I go play shows, I'll let the sound guy know, hey, I have this thing in here and I can just pull a cable out like so, and voila, I can send the sound guy my internal um, kick mic. And this tends to actually get us a really good sound whenever we play out live. So um, if you can, I would definitely recommend seeing if you can kind of MacGyver a uh, microphone to be mounted inside your bass drum at all times. But when I go to record an album, I go, I use as many mics as I can. And so in that case, I throw on a second mic. Here I have, this is a microphone called, um, from a company called Bayer Dynamic. And I just slip this one into the, the, uh, the porthole here. So I put it in such that the grill is just inside the head. And this will get me a bit more of like the, the bottom sound. So now I have a, a good balance of the bass drum sound between the two mics that I can blend later on in post. You know, if you don't have um, a lot of money for outboard gear, and I, I'm gonna talk about outboard gear in a minute, um, but if you don't have a lot of money for that, definitely splurge here. Further along in the, the audio chain that you get, a lot of people will say that you have less effect um, that the earliest thing in the chain is the most important, right? So really the instrument, the, the sound of the bass drum is the most important thing, making sure you have it tuned up right, putting on a new um, kick side head. After that, it's the microphones. Are the microphones um, quality? Are the positioning of the microphones done well? Just a little bit of uh, change of position from here to here can have a huge impact, right? So. Spend some time manipulating just like, you know, an inch, a quarter inch here and there. Find the, the spot that really works for you. Once you have that much done, then you can start to look into outboard gear. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't start splurging on that equipment until you have the signal coming into your mics being as good as you can get it. So let's talk about outboard gear a little bit. Just so you know, I do use plugins in my DAW just like everyone else. I'm using EQ and compression in there as well. But I do find that the outboard gear does give me a little something extra, a little sparkle or whatever the, the terminology is that you want to use that I don't get from uh, plugins alone. So for my bass drum, what I've kind of settled, settled on is two stages before I start to run into the computer. First, I'm using this API. This is the 3124 Plus. The API was this 1970s giant console, uh, or they were making giant consoles in the 70s. And this is just the preamp section that was appearing in those consoles. They are, they're not tubes, right? They're um, solid state, um, but they're not transformer-less either. So you do get coloration out of these. As you can see on both of them, so I have the mic input selected. I have the pad enabled as well because the signal coming in is just so hot since the microphones are inside the bass drum, it would normally clip it. So I turn on the pad and then I just turn up the preamp um, as, as needed. Now, you can see there's a VU meter and the VU meter actually goes above zero. If I remember correct, these can actually go up to 20 decibels over zero before they clip. The reason why you would actually want to do uh, do that, go over zero, is because you can uh, start to get some saturation, not clipping, but some saturation. It adds some extra color, a little extra like umph. It actually, it pairs very well with dynamic mics, which is again, what I'm using on the bass drum. 
doesn't always necessarily pair well with your um, with a condenser mic, but with dynamics they're great. Just so you know, if you do get this unit, this also works great with um, if you want to do like a heavy guitar. Um, so if you're throwing up an SM57, uh, you throw it through one of these things, it's gonna really make that microphone shine. So I run this thing up until the VU meter is hitting the plus six dB mark. I tend to find that even if it's licking the plus 18, that's a little too much. And I like to back it off. So I get these up, like I said, up to plus six. Then I run it into the distressors. Now these these are compressors. Um, they are phenomenal. These are great. These are probably like the workhorse of my studio. Uh, I am just using a four to one compression ratio. I'm trying to not go too, too crazy because I am going to do more compression in the DAW with the plugins. But having the compressors here does mean that it's less likely that I'm going to have a lost track because something clipped after the fact. It tends to be a very fast compressor. When you're hitting this, you'll see like, depending on your setting, that the signal jumps way up a whole lot of LEDs, but it doesn't spend a lot of time there. It's, the magic of these compressors is that you can actually, if you wanted to, you could compress it a ton and it doesn't get a, a compressed sound. It still sounds natural. It still has some air to it. So I set these to four to one. I have the inputs relatively low because I'm coming out of the API so hot. I'm just using uh, uh, the middle levels for the attack and release. Uh, and then I'm not go coming out too hot either. I do have, so I have this Motu down here. This is where I'm coming into the computer. These have pads as well, but instead of uh, having to worry about using these pads, I just turn down the output. That's why I have the output low here. And then I just turn the gain knobs on these down all the way. So that I'm, um, it's technically, I think how the circuitry works is technically hitting the gain stage here, but it's not actually, um, it's not actually bringing the signal up. I'm gonna play you some clips now so that you can hear how this all sounds. These were recorded previously for the last Three Points of Madness album, Circus of Madness. So the setup I used was the same exact thing, same mic, same positioning, same outboard gear. You'll hear first the internal mounted mic, that's the AKG D112. You'll hear that in isolation without any plugins on. Then you'll hear the second mic, the Bayer Dynamic, in isolation again, no plugins on. I'll put the two together so you can hear how they sound. Then I'll turn on the plugin so you can hear how it sounds um, in uh, the final mix. So do you have any tips and tricks that you like to use when recording bass drum? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe.